Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest in our laboratory podcast series. Today, uh, we will be talking about the Edwards line of scroll pumps. <clears throat> My name is David Steele, and I am the market sector manager for North America for our scientific products. And I've uh, been lucky enough to look after scroll pumps as, as one of our product lines for a long time. And joining us today is Dave Goodwin. Dave, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Dave. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Dave Goodwin. I'm the product manager uh, for Scroll Pumps. I've been associated uh, with Edwards since 1986, and I've been working in the scientific sector for most of that time. And uh, yeah, I'd love to chat about our Scroll Pumps today. We have, and Dave and I have been working together a long time. I've, I've been with Edwards uh, since the mid-90s, so we've uh, we've spent quite a lot of time together over the years. Um, Dave Goodwin um, is based in the UK and me, David Steele, I am actually based in North America, in, uh, on the east coast of North America. So this podcast coming to you uh, from both sides of the Atlantic. So, um, Dave, Edwards has been making scroll pumps for quite some time. Um, do you want to give us a little bit of the sort of the background history of how we started uh, down down our uh, our journey of scroll pumps yeah no problem it's been it's been quite a journey um early scroll pumps was like based on the uh, scroll pumps used in compressors air conditions things like that and mm -hmm. they'd been adapted for use um in the uh, in the vacuum market but we saw that there were ways that uh, we could improve on that and it did a lot of development work in the uh, in the late 1990s uh, what we were after was uh, an arrangement whereby uh, the the scrolls were described as single sided i.e. you could take one scroll off and expose the other scrolls so that you could change the tip seals and the other mm -hmm. thing that we were looking for was um, the bearings to be protected or separated from uh, the gases being pumped so we did a load of work and then um, in the Year 2000, we introduced our first generation of uh, scroll pumps, the XDS 5 and 10. Uh, right. the, and, yeah. and the we we what was the reasoning behind introducing those scroll pumps in the first place, Dave? Oh, because we, we wanted... had the oil sealed rotary vane pumps. They were doing a great job. Why why introduce a new a new pump? Oh yeah, set, yeah. Set up question there for the audience. <laughs> Thanks for asking that question, Dave. Um, well, what we wanted to do is give our customers the a choice. Uh, yeah, you can carry on using the um, oil sealed rotary vane pumps, and uh, we were making, of course, and continue to make the EM pumps and the uh, RV pumps um, that are around that that uh, are around that size. Um, and we thought, uh, no, we want we want to offer a clean, dry alternative that we've developed and uh, introduced and by clean and dry i mean there's there's no oil to check top up or replace or dispose of and uh, that what you know basically what goes into the pump comes out the other side as mm -hmm. well so it opens up a you know a range of applications without having to worry about the oil no right and i think it's probably fair to say that uh, the the early scroll pumps, you know, b before the Edwards ranges came out, were all what what I would call sort of clean and dry pumps. You couldn't really use them to pump anything than just you know air inert atmospheres, um, and they even struggled with things like you know high water vapor background. So um, that was a big part of of the desire to develop a new range, wasn't it? A pump that could be used in a similar manner to general purpose oil sealed rotary vane pumps. Yeah, that, that sums it up quite nicely, Dave. It does. Yeah, so in the early 2000s, we introduced our first Edwards design and made uh, scroll pumps, and that was the XDS 5 and 10 range, right? Yep, yep. And then we followed that up in 2002 with the larger XDS 35i. And... Uh, that was a very nice, you know, sort of like next generation for us because uh, that was where we introduced the first like smart drive on there to give universal uh, performance uh, throughout throughout the world. Yeah, right, because 
uh, uh, the online, if you, you have an AC motor, uh, one that you plug into the into an AC socket in the wall, if you don't have a smart drive, the speed that that motor runs, and so then the pump speed of the pump is uh, is governed by the mains frequency of where you plug it in. So we're lucky in the US that we have 60 hertz main, so we get about 20% more pumping speed than 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 Europe, poor Europe on 50 hertz. So it, it overcomes that problem. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And yeah. then a li little later on, uh, we introduced a slightly higher capacity pump, the 46i. Mm -hmm. And then um, later on in the story of the XDS 35i family, uh, we introduced the enhanced version. That was uh, 2018, and that's the one where we expanded uh, the, the sort of like performance envelope uh, for it. Mm -hmm. So the, the XDS 5 and 10 were sort of our first phase pumps. The XDS 35i family were the second phase. That's so it. then, then what happened? Well, then uh, we did some further development work, and in 2012, we introduced the now ubiquitous uh, NXDS uh, range of pumps. So mm -hmm. those pumps were a 6, a 10, a 15, and a 20. So the uh, 6 and the uh, 10 could take over from the XDS uh, 5 and 10, and the 15 and 20 extended the range to again complement the sort of pumping speeds that we could see uh, with our oil sealed uh, red vein pumps and mm -hmm. it also meant that the performance that we got matched some of the 60 hertz performance that uh, was we're seeing from uh, red vein pumps oh nice and the, the numbers we as a general t um, usage, the, the number that we use to describe the pumps is nominally the pumping speed in cubic meters an hour, right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. that's, that's what we're trying it. to do. Uh, so the, the desire to uh, be able to use these pumps as sort of general purpose pumps in a laboratory doing the same type of duty yep. meant that we needed models that could handle things like solvents and you know dilute acids, things you'd use in a laboratory environment. Do you, can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we uh, we had the standard uh, version, and then we did what was described as the uh, C version. So that's the one that's got the Kemra's exhaust valve and Kemra's uh, gas ballast valve plus stainless steel inlet and uh, and outlet. It did make them just a little bit more chemically resistant. And of course, if you are going to pump any amounts of vapors or any amounts of th 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 those sorts of things do remember to use the gas ballast to uh, get the old pump warmed up and then get rid of anything that's lurking around in the mechanism after you've finished uh, pumping that mm. so and that's kind of a vapor handling with uh, with small vacuum pumps like these whether they're oil sealed or uh, or dry pumps like scroll pumps gas ballast is really the the key thing we oh, for more info on that we do have another podcast that uh, that we discuss that so do do dig around and and have a listen to that if that's a, a new thing to you yeah and i think the other thing to mention about the NXDS was that it got a new drive on there, one that the customers uh, could uh, interface with and uh, be able to control the pump more to like play around with the uh, standby speed that they could uh, have on there. Mm -hmm. And those that that interface will uh, connect directly to something like our tick in turbo and instrument controller too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To give you uh, you know remote start and stop, or you've yep. got a fifteen way D there to. Uh, go and uh, control the pump fire to do to do uh, remote start stop and and what have you yeah. um what about some of the specialty variants like there's the uh the recirculation variants what what were those introduced for oh that's for when you're sort of like recirculating uh, expensive gases or uh for the helium recirculation or helium right, dilution so Right. So if you've got something like helium that you're continuously recycling or SF6 and you don't want to accidentally introduce gas ballast or a purge gas, yep. it's, uh, it's basically a blanked off gas ballast, right? It is, yeah. On the on the 35i that we, the version of that that we do, it's described as a no gas ballast pump because basically the gas ballast has not even been machined into the fixed scroll. So it's <laughs> there's nothing to open on the on the uh, NXDSs. We've uh, blanked off uh, the gas ballast there. 
so mm -hmm. uh, you can't easily uh, open that. Yeah, so the, the th one of the things I really like about the NXCS range is that sort of modular approach to the design, which allows you to you know, add accessories if you want to, and even yeah. we even make kits to if you've got a standard version and you say, hey, I really probably should have bought the chemical version. We have a conversion kit for that 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 makes the pump into the same specification as the as the uh, as the chemical version. So I think that's quite a nice addition to be able to um, make the the range flexible even after you've bought it. Yeah, well, I'm glad you like that. <laughs> that's good. So, um, how many? Is a question, Dave. How many of these pumps have we have we made? How many have cool. shipped to customers? Oh, well, over the years, so well over a hundred thousand. Wow! So these have really become sort of standard off-the-shelf components now. Nothing sort of nothing uh, uh, high-end or uh, or bespoke about these. These are standard high-volume production units. Wow, so these, these are pumps. these are a high volume manufactured uh, item then. Yeah, yeah, they are. Oh wow! Indeed, and we we make them in our factory in the in Luton in the Czech Republic, right? Where we build our our V pumps and our NEXT scroll pumps. Yeah, and we make our turbo pumps there as well, and the EM pumps, the little uh, oh. oil sealed red revein pumps. Oh, right. so we make a load of stuff out there. It's our scientific center of excellence. It Very is good. Indeed. indeed. So that that brings us on to the fourth era, our sort of fourth generation pumps, uh, and the very recent introduction this year of our mini scroll. We'll talk about that for a bit. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because you know we were looking at our our range of scroll pumps, and we've got the big ones at, at, at the far at the far end there, the thirty five i, the forty six i. Then we've got the NXDS in the middle, and we're sort of like going, well, we could just do with something a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. got decent pumping speed, got a good ultimate, and it's clean and it's dry, and you can pick it up and you can walk around with it if it, you know, and place it where 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 you want it, and mm -hmm. that's the sort of drive behind the the little uh, mxds uh, 3 and mxds 3s uh, otherwise known as mini scrolls um so that we've got a, a again a clean dry alternative to oil sealed rotary vane pumps and an alternative to uh, diaphragm pumps at that sort of size in the in the marketplace as i say it's a three meter cube per hour pump 0.1 millibar ultimate so it, it fits nicely um in that gap and a nice little uh, compact package uh that can more or less directly drop in uh, a similar size uh, alternate technology pump so you could swap out for most applications something like certainly a diaphragm pump if you're using a diaphragm pump uh, like our xdd1 this would make an excellent sort of upgraded swap out uh, and even for, I would say for most applications, replacing uh, our small E2M 1.5 size um, rotary vein pump. Yeah, yeah, that's all. yeah. So I, that's the idea. That's the idea behind it. Uh, I do like the um, the S version. Is the first time we've introduced a pump with a integrated inlet valve. Do you want to just briefly talk about how that works and and what what benefits that offers? Yeah, Dave. The um... The MXDS 3S has a small um, solenoid valve. Because it's a, a low pumping speed uh, pump, you can, you can get away with a small um, solenoid valve on there. And what that does is uh, it acts to seal in the event of power failure. Yeah. So when the pump's switched on, there's a little relay in the electrics box, which counts to around about 10 and then the valve opens and that gives time for the pump to run up to speed evacuate itself and then pump down the the fall line yeah um in the event of mains failure like or the power when going you switch off or something like yeah that. Yep. yeah or, or when you when when you switch off the pump bam mm -hmm. the uh the little solenoid valve closes and it effectively seals the pump from the fall line all right, so it's even if you've got the gas ballast open on the pump, it prevents the fall line from getting yeah. slowly vented to atmosphere, right? That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. Because, you know, all pumps, all of our scroll pumps have got an exhaust valve in the exhaust in the exhaust line, which which seals 
the pump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've still then got to think about the, all the gases that are from inlet pressure to atmospheric pressure uh, that are within the mechanism that will re-expand um, when the pump is switched off. So having the little inlet valve, it gives a, an extra layer of, uh, of protection. All right, and is is there anything that the that, that a user needs to do to control that valve? No, it's uh, set up. So it's fully integrated into the pump, sort of yeah. totally transparent. Yeah, yeah. Ex excellent. Well, with that said, with our newest uh, MXDS pump discussed, I think that sort of brings us to the end of our of our current journey, at least the state of, of, of where we are in our scroll pump journey at the moment, and the end of today's podcast. So I'd like to thank Dave Goodwin again, um, joining me uh, for, for this uh, edition of our Laboratory po Talk podcast, the Two Daves edition. Um, and next, uh, look forward to joining you on our next edition of Laboratory Talk podcast. I have been David Steele. And I've been David Goodwin. Thank you.